So now, I'd like to call up the new owner of the Baltimore Orioles, David Rubenstein. Thank you, Governor, and I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Wells, the President of the City Council, the Mayor, Senator Cardin. Thank you all for coming and all of you uh, who are here today. I first met uh, the Governor when he joined the Johns Hopkins Board. I was on the Johns Hopkins University Board, and they announced that a new person was joining the board, Wes Moore. And I looked at the resume and said, how can anybody do all that? How could somebody be a Rhodes Scholar, a football player at Hopkins? I worked, uh, I served in the military in Iraq and Afghanistan and he's a nice guy um, and charming. And I said, I've seen a lot of political talent in my life. Uh, this person should go into politics at some point. Uh, but before that, I tried to recruit him to my firm. I said, the highest calling of mankind is private equity, and uh, you should get him the private equity firm. But uh, he had uh, other things in mind. He wanted to do things like Robin Hood and other kinds of things and give back to the society. And so I admire the governor, and I want to thank him for hosting me for lunch on Saturday, because although he's very busy, obviously, with many things, he wanted to talk about the Baltimore Orioles and the ground lease that we hope to negotiate and complete by the end of the year, and the governor made me, uh, convince me that he would get it through the legislature as soon as possible. So thank you very much, Governor, for that. And uh, let me just say that Baltimore has a closer relationship with its team its baseball team than I think any other city does in the country. The, the team really represents the character, the soul, uh, the grit, the personality of this city in a way that is not really true of any other baseball team and its city. And that's a good thing. Baltimore is a unique city. I grew up here. I know the pluses. I know the minuses. I know the challenges. I know the opportunities. And we have now a political team in the city, in the state, that I think can really help make this city uh, live up to all of its potential. I hope the Orioles can play a small part in that. Because I hope what can happen is that the Orioles can, by winning, by unifying the city, by re recovering the kind of uh, greatness that it had in 1966 or 70 or 73, we can win a World Series again. But to do that, it's not easy, and it requires everybody to pull together. The 26 players in the team are 26 key people to make the team go forward. But you really need people in the back office, the front office, and the fans and the commercial interest in the city and the whole character of the city to pull together. Nobody's ever won a World Series by having a fan base that didn't care about the team. Nobody's ever won a World Series with the lethargic fans. You need fans who are dedicated and who care about the, the team. And that's what we have, but we're going to have it even more, I hope. And so what I wanted to do is to give back to the city in some ways. I grew up in Baltimore. I got a great public school education at Baltimore City College. At Right? Um, and at other schools, uh, Pimlico Junior High School, Fall Staff Elementary. And the best teachers I ever had, in, in not, including college and law school, were my teachers in Baltimore City College. Uh, it was a wonderful thing to give me a public education, which my parents uh, really needed to, to give me because they couldn't have afforded to send me to a, a private school. And I really want to give back to Baltimore in a modest way. Uh, my expression of uh, appreciation for all that Baltimore has done for me over the years and done for my family. So I grew up here. I uh, was educated here. Uh, my parents grew up here. They were educated here. My parents are buried here, and, and I will be buried here. And I really want to say to Baltimore, uh, this is a new day, a new chapter. Uh, we've had some challenge in the past, but we're looking forward. And in this regard, I want to thank John Angelos and his family, and particularly his mother, Georgia, who I met with recently. Um, they've had some challenges for sure. There's no doubt that it was not easy for times. But John Angelos decided it was a good time for a new chapter, and I thank him for doing so. Now, when the team first came here in 1954, the purchase price was $2.2 million. My partners and I are paying a little bit more than that, <laughs> inflation being what it is. But we're proud of every penny we're paying because it's worth every penny we're paying. Because we really have a unique franchise with an incredible our group of young players with the best general manager in baseball, the best manager in baseball, and I hope the best fans in baseball, and also the best government officials supporting a team in baseball. So what I hope to do is to make sure this is not the high watermark. 
Um, today is an easy day to say everything is great and hopefully we'll win opening day. But I don't want this to be the high water mark. I want the high water mark to be in the fall when we go to the World Series and we show that we are a, a city that supports a great team and we are a city that is represented by a great team and we unify the city in ways that only the Orioles can really do. Uh, we have other teams and other great institutions in this city and I've been involved with some of them like Johns Hopkins. But nothing, nothing unifies a city and unifies this city as the Baltimore Orioles and as the success of the Baltimore Orioles. So I hope that we can bring that about and I look forward to working with everybody in Baltimore who would like to help the Orioles become as great as they once were and as great as we know they can be. Now, I've gotten a fair amount of attention recently. Uh, I wish my, my parents were alive to see it. Uh, my mother would say, David, what do you know about owning a baseball team? And of course, she wouldn't have that much confidence. I knew that much. Um, she told me not to go into business because it wouldn't work. Um, she said, keep my law license. You need something to fall back on. I'm still a member of the DC bar just in case I have to fall back on my legal skills, which are not that great. But I, I didn't do this by myself. There were a whole team of people that worked on this for many, many, many months. People who are friends of mine, people who are colleagues of mine, people who are investment bankers, people who are lawyers, accountants, and so forth. It was a, a real, it, you know, to buy a baseball team, it, it takes a city to buy a baseball team. It takes a village to buy a baseball team. And we, a lot of people, I want to thank all of them for working together. Uh, one of my, one of the key things I wanted to do was to have a financial partner along my side who knows a lot more about finance than I do and who's built a really good company. And that person is Mike Arigetti. He has not as well known to you because he's not from Baltimore, but he knows much more about baseball probably than I do because he's been a participant in a fantasy baseball league for 27 years, 27 years. And um, now he has to give that up because the rules of baseball don't let you be in fantasy baseball leagues anymore. But he knows a great deal about uh, finance. He's built an incredible company in New York called Aries and with his partners who are also here, who are also investing with us, I think we've got a great combination. So it's my pleasure and honor to have my partner come up here, Mike Arigetti. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, David and Governor Moore, and thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, my partners, Mitch Goldstein, Mike Smith, and I stand proudly with the great city of Baltimore today. Uh, David always loves to mention my, my fantasy baseball uh, legendary performance, but really what I think that's more indicative of is just my lifelong passion for this great game that we all love together. And as much as I love the sport uh, and the pacing of, of the season, what baseball has done for me and I think has done for this community is bring people together. I know nothing in the world of sport that brings communities and families together generation to generation with shared memories and history and values and dreams. Uh, and I know the healing power of sport and the healing power of baseball. And so my thoughts and prayers go out to the families uh, and all of the lives that have been impacted by the tragedy at the Key Bridge. But it is my sincere hope that today, opening day will be a moment where we all can come together and have a moment of joy in a dark week and celebrate this city and this community and the strength of the city of Baltimore. Now, David is also so generous uh, with his description of my accomplishments, but David and I have been friends and competitors for a very long time, and he is a very unique, special kind of leader. Uh, he approaches his entire life with a sense of humility and modesty. Uh, I think we both share uh, humble beginnings. Both of my parents were uh, public school teachers, and so I always get a, a great kick out of David's uh, love of his public school education. My grandfather was a postal worker. Um, my paternal grandfather was a, was a Navy Yard welder. And so I understand how uh, important baseball is to communities and to cities and to pulling people up, and I feel fortunate to be able to be here uh, doing my little part to, to help improve the city of Baltimore. Uh, and advance this great franchise. But David is a special leader. He is a servant leader. He puts the people that are around him before himself. He approaches everything he does with great philanthropy and great generosity. Uh, and I think it's through that lens that I come to this moment in my life and with this franchise because we are really uh, guardians of, of this franchise. This is, it's nice to be an owner, but this is an asset of the city and the community. 
Uh, we have a deep sense of civic responsibility to do the best we can to advance the franchise, to advance the neighborhood, um, and we're going to do everything we can to do that. What I've also done, despite the, the humility, I've also come to know that David is a great competitor. Uh, and maybe one of the things that I love more than baseball is winning. And I know that David does too. And while we are united in many views and many things, I think we are together in our steadfast hunger to bring a World Series championship back to Baltimore as soon as possible. And we will do everything that we can to do that. And so I look forward to a great season. Thank you for embracing me, my family, my partners. We're, we're thrilled to be part of this wonderful community and look forward to a great season. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. I uh, speak on Sorry, behalf. Sorry, go and the book. Find your patient. I'll see you after work. Big League Baseball is back in Baltimore after an absence of 52 years. But the good old days take a back seat to new days, looking ahead to big things from its new Orioles. And the Orioles are the new world champions. Baltimore is the world champ. Everybody else is in muted silence. The pitch, line drive, Lipkin catches it at shortstop, and the Orioles are the champions of the world. And this shows you what a great ball club we have, and there's no one individual on this ball club. The most deserving manager in baseball, Earl Weaver. We wanted it all, if we could possibly get it. Ninth time Palmer has appeared in a World Series game, but never before as a relief pitcher. You see the tears streaming down the eyes of a fan of Frank and Brooks and all the other Orioles. And the big group listen to it. Made so many great memories here at Memorial Stadium. Orioles take the field officially for the first time in this new ballpark. It is official now. Cal Ripken has broken Blue Gary's record. has in its DNA, smartest, most forward-thinking, most progressive organization in baseball. And the fact that that has been the case here before means that it's possible for that to be the case here again. Bullets into center field. This should do it. A clincher, a walk-off. The Orioles have done it. You are the new champions of the American League East. I think we're really going to enjoy this next tape, though. No matter how much I try to ruin it, that gives you chills, doesn't it? Thank you, Mike. I speak on behalf of the entire organization and Birdland when I say we look forward to writing the next chapter of Oriole Baseball with you. Uh, before I go on, we missed a couple of people. Um, I'd like to take this time to acknowledge Lieutenant Governor Aruna Miller. Uh, thank you. And, and I would be remiss, uh, growing up in, in West Baltimore, listening to the Oriole baseball on the radio, it was always Ripken and Murray. So we have to acknowledge Baseball Hall of Famer's Cal Ripken. <laughs> and of course, Eddie Murray. <laughs> Governor Moore.